Hello, and welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. In today's video, we're talking about human perception and why human perception is one of the most powerful things that you can understand. But before we get into that, if you've been enjoying the videos on this channel so far, please can you remember to hit that subscribe button because there are new exciting behavioral science videos coming to this channel very, very soon. All right, thank you for clicking on the video and please enjoy. This video is called Why Branded Painkillers Work Better Than Generic Ones. And the reason why that's true is fascinating. But to explain why, I want you to look at this screen. No, this isn't a mistake. Your video has loaded correctly. What is it that you think you see? Is it this? You see, you don't. Because this color, purple, and even these colors are actually illusions. Mental, psychophysical tricks your screen is playing on you. Your screen, whether it be a laptop, phone, or a TV, is comprised of tiny pixels. Tiny RGB pixels. What does the RGB stand for? Red, green, and blue. Which means your screen never actually emits yellow light. So the yellow you see here, and here, and here, is an illusion. Your brain is interpreting that specific pattern of red, green, and blue light emission and is instantaneously, reliably, and consistently producing the image of the color yellow. But that color yellow only exists in your mind. It is a mental reconstruction that differs from reality. So what does this have to do with behavioral science and painkillers? Well, my argument in this video is this. Your perception and reality are different. So designed for better perception, not for a better reality. Let me give you some examples. Dan Ariely, who I'm sure many of you have heard of, did an experiment investigating how expectations affect experience. And he did it using beer. In this experiment, they offered students free beer. And being a recent graduate myself, free beer is a good way to get students to be willing to participate in your study. The experimenters offered two small beers to students to taste, and then the students were asked which of the two beers they preferred. Let's call them beer A and beer B. Now A and B were actually identical, except that one beer had a little balsamic vinegar in it. Now the results revealed that there were two types of responses to the beer with the balsamic vinegar. One group much preferred the balsamic vinegar beer, and the other group hated it. What could possibly be causing such a dramatic difference in their enjoyment of the beer? The answer, it was when they were told that the beer had balsamic vinegar. Those who tasted the beers blind were the ones who loved the balsamic vinegar beer. It offered an interesting little something something to the taste that made it more pleasant to drink. However, the group that hated it were told it contained balsamic vinegar before they tasted it. And it turns out, people anticipate that balsamic vinegar to be terrible for the taste of beer. So that when they tried it with this expectation that it would be terrible, it actually was terrible for them. Their expectation shaped their real experience. You see, taste, like the color yellow from earlier, is a perceptual phenomenon. And your perception is not an objective view of reality. Much like the color yellow on your screen, your perception of reality is deduced by interpreting a host of different signals that aren't necessarily the thing that we're trying to judge. Subconsciously, these external signals are shaping our judgments. And your perception of many phenomena is actually far more complicated than that of vision. We draw from all sorts of cues to shape our perceptual judgment of reality. We take information from social cues, from deductive reasoning, and from our memory of past experiences, all to make better inferences about what we are experiencing in the moment. Food, it turns out, is an excellent example of how our perception of reality can be altered by factors that we often don't consider. One of my favorite examples is when Cadbury's changed the shape of their dairy milk bar from square and angular pieces to round and smooth ones. You wouldn't think that this move would cause a large amount of controversy. However, a large number of disgruntled chocolate fans complained that the new curvy chocolate pieces were too sweet. So uproarious were their outcries that Cadbury had to issue an official statement stating, we have been very clear and consistent that we have not changed the recipe of our much loved Cadbury dairy milk. But you see, 
they did change the recipe. The shape was part of the recipe. It turns out we as a species have associated roundness and smoothness with sweetness. So round chocolate really does taste sweeter. And as I said earlier, taste is a perceptual phenomenon, not an objective one. It only exists within your own mind, just like the color yellow from earlier. So if the chocolate tastes sweeter to you, then it is sweeter. The reality of the ingredients that were used in the chocolate recipe is irrelevant. Another example from the food industry is a study that found that foods labeled low sodium on the packaging tasted worse than those same foods without the low sodium label. The low sodium label was like telling the students that there was balsamic vinegar in their beer. People expect it to taste bad and then it really does taste bad as a result. Let's move on from food. What about time? Time is measured objectively, right? Seconds, minutes, hours, etc. But the experience of time passing, that is a perceptual experience. How fast or slow time passes is a conclusion that our brain reaches by being highly influenced by a host of external factors that often have more influence than time itself. To explain, let me give you an example for one of my favorite niches in social psychology to read up on, and that's the social psychology of theme parks. If you've been to a busy theme park before, you'll know that outside of the exciting rides and amusements to look at, a main feature of your day will actually be standing in queues for rides. Now, waiting for this long for anything can be an incredibly frustrating experience. So there is a ton of psychological research on how to make queues feel shorter without actually being shorter. One almost trivially simple solution is to replace the rope with a sturdy railing that people can lean against, and also providing fans and air conditioning for those people in the queue. You see, comfort, it turns out, is an exceptionally important and influential factor on people's time perception. Having air conditioning and a railing to lean against makes the queuing experience much less strenuous and therefore time passes much faster. Another amazingly simple solution is simply to make the queues wide enough so that you can look at and talk to the people who you're queuing with. You see, research shows that time seems to pass by much faster if you're in a stimulated conversation with your friends and your family. This is a far more enjoyable way to queue than standing single file in silence. And finally, let's talk about pain. So pain, taste, and the passing of time are all perceptual phenomena. You can't measure perceptual phenomena like you measure physical properties of objects. There's no ruler for pain. The best we can do is ask people, hey, how much pain do you feel? Maybe rate it out of one to 10 or something like that. And so pain, as with any other matter of perception, a little bit of psychological alchemy can be applied. Now, it's been long established that placebo painkillers work. This has been proven experimentally many times, but perhaps one of the most famous examples from behavioral science comes again from Dan Ariely, who I mentioned earlier. You see, Dan Ariely was badly burned and was in a burn ward with many other patients. And he would note that their cries for pain could be satiated without administering any medicinal painkiller. By a nurse simply injecting some salt water into them, they would think that it was morphine and their body would produce the analgesic response. They expected to experience pain relief and then they actually did experience pain relief. But in another study from the University of Auckland investigating placebo painkillers, if you put placebo ibuprofen in a box that's labeled Nurofen, it actually relieves more pain than if you put it in a generic ibuprofen box. Once again, people's expectations are shaping their reality. The branded, more expensive painkiller is expected to be more potent. So in reality, it was more potent. Because you see, pain is perceptual, just like the color yellow from your screen, just like taste and just like the passing of time. You can't measure pain with any kind of pain sensor. Pain exists within the mind. So a placebo that gives you perceived greater pain relief is greater pain relief. There's no differentiation. So if I wanna leave you with some closing lessons, the first would be this. Perception does not always follow reality. Even if you don't change the ingredients in your chocolate, your chocolate might actually taste sweeter. My second lesson would be that blind taste tests are largely pointless and often misleading. Real life experiencing of products isn't made blind. 
The information people have about your product, including the packaging, their memory of it, and what they've heard from their friends, all shape their experience. A blind taste test does not give you an accurate representation of how that same product will be experienced in real life. The difference will be huge. And finally, if you're in the business of shaping perception, then don't make the mistake of trying to design for reality and not perception. Don't make the ride go faster, add a railing, and add some air conditioning. You'll have far less complaints about queue times. Hey, congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please can you subscribe down below if you haven't already, and please give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Leave me a comment and let me know what videos that you want to see on this channel. Alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.